Cyber Dragon Best Deck. What's up, guys? So a few weeks ago, I promised you guys a Cyber Dragon testing video, and uh, yeah, I know I'm very late, uh, so my bad. But like I always say, better late than ever, so here you go, and hope you enjoy. All right, replay number one, I'm facing off against Dynamorphia. Very interesting hand, double Iron Thunder with the end Exalting Morganite, which is a neg one, but I guess you refund your money back over time. So yeah, my opponent had used both Morganite cards, so no monster effects in the hand. And then for the rest of the duel, uh, you can attack twice, I guess, with uh, this monster is always normal summon twice and also uh, draw two cards during each draw phase. But none of this matters. It's still a neck two. It absolutely changes nothing because I am not going to give my opponent a turn because I'm not trying to grind with my opponent. I'm just trying to kill him. And this ass blaster going second was really nice because I placed it in the same column as Iron Thunder. So my opponent had to either negate with Iron Thunder or destroy with Dynamorph um, Dynamorphia Brute. And that's what he did. So yeah, pay 4,000 life points just to pretty much do nothing productive. And then I can pop off and kill my opponent because, you know, 2,000 life points attached to Theresia. Nice deck. All right, that was a huge blowout, but this game is going to be way more interesting because my opponent has a bunch of potential back row with anti-spell and the one-card combo. So Theresia to be uh, setting the frenzy and also has intact, which can negate any monster effect. Ferret Flames, really good card in the deck. Anti-spell and the Iron Thunder, just in case I also have like evenly matched or something. Most decks will struggle against this. It's pretty nasty. And also, I have four spell cards in my hand. Man, it's kind of tricky. But, you know, Cyber Dragon best deck, what can I say? Normal 7 core, I get uh, Solemn Strike, pretty much. And I can't really do anything else, so set 4 pass. Uh, end of main phase, summon the Rextrum, and then uh, that's that's it. I would have summoned the other guy, the Cat uh, something, and then summoned the Rextrum off of that. Whatever, M maybe, uh, yeah, it, uh, I don't know. And also, I take a little bit of damage, which is not enough because I'm still alive. I'm pretty sure this would have been game if he summoned the other guy, would have had 3,000 attack. I might have survived with like 500 light points, actually. Top deck, Lightning Storm, the absolute worst card I could have drawn. And then I'm going to be banishing the core in order to summon another uh, Cyber Dragon monster from the deck. And he's going to use the Soul of the Supreme King to summon the Zark. So he still has Ferret Flames and Iron Thunder to negate pretty much anything. And the Zark doesn't uh, trigger to destroy my whole board. I activate the Clockwork Knight. And it's a coincidence that the Iron Thunder was there and the Clockwork Knight was there. So now it's going to destroy the Theresia, which is going to trigger the Theresia. And then banish another Trap from the Grave to summon the um, this card right here, the Diblos. Which means that he used a Monster Effect this turn. Which means that he can, I can use the Triple Tactic Throw as well. To be fair, I could have uh, done that as soon as he summoned the Zarg because it's a mandatory effect. And I'm going to be searching the Machine Doom. Mind Control, steal the Rextrum. Can you guess my next action? I love doing this so much because now I've got a level 8 and a level 2. One is a light, one is a dark. Yeah, you know it. Chaos Angel, banish that anti-spell. Ferret Flames, that's a nice deck you got there. So it's going to go back to the extra deck. And then Triple Tactic Talents to steal the Zarg. So that even if I use like another spell down the line, my opponent will not be able to summon all the supreme whatever monsters from the extra deck like Crystal Wing and stuff. And the talent does not uh, target. So even if my opponent summons the Crystal Wing, I can steal it. And yes, normal summon Cyber Dragon hurts. Activate the machine duplication, summon two Cyber Dragon. And this is so satisfying. The grind, the legendary comeback through freaking five back row and the combo. And now I have infinity, but he has two chop cards in the grave to stop the battle damage so there is the intact and uh, well in intact I, I think there's only uh, only the counter chops can negate battle damage the other ones all negate uh, effect damage if i recall correctly so yeah negate the first one and then use the other one but it only prevents some um, damage from that battle not for the rest of the turn so his own Zark is going to finish him off. And just like that, I made the best comeback. Okay, so now I am going second against this whatever. Horus something that Horus Eldlich. There we go. It doesn't really feel like an Eldlich deck. And also, I feel like this was completely unnecessary to search a Horus monster just to put it back on the bottom of the deck. You might as well just not do that and try to mitigate the impact of Drill and Logbird as much as uh, possible because it's not like people would ever Ash this. So it's not like you can say it's an Ash bait or something. And it's also not really an Ogre bait. An Ogre doesn't beat you when you got Imsteady with another Horus monster. You can search your Sarcophagus and then revive back your two Horus monsters. And then you can use the effect and then if I Ogre, then you can trigger the Happy and then recycle back uh, the, the Sarcophagus and then just do it again. So it does absolutely nothing. And he also mills me and uh, he's nice enough to give me a core in the grave. So thank you so much. I really love you. So I'm basically starting my turn with a plus one for free. One of the drawbacks of Zombie Vampire, especially when he doesn't mill anything of value. Like, look at this. And also playing the Toy Engine and the Bestial Engine... Yeah, okay, so yeah, this is a good stuff deck. Not really an Eldritch deck. It, I guess that explains why he's not really drawing any of the any of the, the trap cards. And yeah, either way, I, I have the Duster, so uh, yeah, again, that's a nice deck you got there. Recycle back the core, and also Surge Galaxy Soldier, thanks to him for mailing the core. 
So I can normal summon that and then get my search for emergency, which then searches Cyber Dragon. So it gets me an extra body in rotation, which is not too bad. Cyber Dragon Nova, revive back at that Cyber Dragon. And then this is where I can go into Chaos Angel again because this is a level 8 dark. And I've got a level 2 light, so yeah, banish that Eldritch the Golden Lord. So I was able to kill multiple uh, birds with the same stone here. And then also Infinity Absorb, I also could have contact fused. But, you know, I, I might as well just have as many level 5 monsters as possible. I guess it, it doesn't really change anything at this point, but I could have made like a, a second Nova or something and then de de deal even more damage. Okay, going second against Mimigul this time. Again, another weird deck. I, I don't know why he chose to go first. I'm pretty sure he went first by his own will. And main decking Sphere Mode, Lightning Star. I'm, I'm really confused because this deck's not naturally good going second. So maybe that's the reason why he's doing that. But I don't know. It, it feels really weird because it's kind of relatively easy to play around those cards and also are you really trying to sphere mode like the monsters that you give me it doesn't really make any sense like the goal is to trigger them so that you can get advantage off of the monsters that you gave me not really to tribute them so i don't know maybe i'm missing something and yo this this play right here with beatrice sending the 80 charger uh changer not too bad actually it makes beatrice uh, pretty cool but i got the droplet to not only negate it but also get rid of my mimical monster so it doesn't matter Lightning Storm doesn't do anything, so even if these were like three back row, at least my Lightning Storm would have been able to do something and he would have mega lost. But yeah, you already know, you know, and you know, core machine do. But Triple Tactic Thrust is so freaking nice in this deck. But yeah, one, one thing that I realized in this situation, when you already have used your normal summon, there's nothing the emergency can really grab. Like, what, what am I trying to get? Like, next turn, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't do much in order to help facilitate an OTK, because Verte Anaconda is banned. Otherwise, it would have been like 15,000 damage. It would have been Verte, Seeger, Infinity, and Rampage, which is insanity. But yeah, no, it's making just generic Link 2s. It's kind of useless, unfortunately. And yeah, I'm going to banish, uh, I'm going to lose my Infinity, which doesn't matter. And he's going to have to make a Typhon over SP, otherwise I can just contact Fuser Mega Fleet. So yeah, it's kind of like a necessity, but it really doesn't beat me. And by the way, for all this time, the sphere mode were uh, the sphere modes were in his hand because I only had like two monsters on the board. This Typhon takes like two seconds to out because I can just make a Seeger jump over. It's 42. And if he can't out a Seeger, every single turn, I'm going to have to go attack, 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 attack. And eventually, I will uh, be able to win. And yeah, Cyber Repair Plan, get back my Nova just because I want to summon it again. I think in this build, very specific, uh, specifically, I only had uh, one Nova, so that's uh, the reason why it was kind of rough. My grand game, I figured, was a little a little shit, honestly, so I had to fix it, and that's the reason why in my updated deck profile, you're going to see a few changes compared to last time, at least. Contact Fuse with everything for Fortress, Attack, Top Deck's literally the best card in this situation, because that's kind of like a, a Welcome Labyrinth, and also a Book of Moon at the same time. It summons the, the Stratos, and then I can just droplet it, so it doesn't really change anything. But it makes him survive, and then, uh, yeah, tribute summon for Nova, revive back the Seeger, and then pass turn. Again, the Sphere Mode's doing nothing for, like, the seventh turn in a row. Uh, top deck, the uh, uh, other insane card in the deck, which is a starter that searches the field spell that gives him pretty much an infinite grind game. Every single turn searches a card. It's crazy how this deck has a bunch of really nice cards, but it's just not enough because the Mimigul cards, they're just too reactive. Like, you gotta wait until your opponent does something. Okay, so in this situation, I was forced to go first by this Lightsworn player. Uh, Relinquished Fusion, wow, I just realized that. Yeah, I, I thought it was just like a pure Lightsworn deck going second for some reason because I would never try to go first in this deck. But yeah, no, uh, apparently it's uh, it's a little spicier than I thought. I mean, I, I did see one Relinquished card, but it wasn't this. So I don't know, m maybe, I, maybe, I, maybe I did and I, and I forgot, I really don't I, I don't care but i guess it's a miracle fusion as well so I, I kind of understand even though it's ass the best thing that i can do when i have cord machine dupe in this build unfortunately is just sp and in, uh, infinity because i'm not main decking the fiendsmith package otherwise the uh, the sp would have been the um uh, caesar instead but it does involve four cards in your extra deck and one brick in your main deck so it's it's kind of unfortunate but it's not the end of the world summons minerva in the worst column possible it's not the end of the world either because he can just crash and it's not like it changes much of anything. Uh, and yeah, I pretty much have to use the SP so that he only mails one card here. I also saw some tier cards. I don't even think it's a tier... Oh yeah, never mind. Yeah, there's the Field Spell and Merly. What the hell is this deck? And it's also like... It's not even a 60 card deck. 27, 15, 5 cards in hand. I'm confused as shit. But yeah, this is pretty much gonna be game, I think. Yeah, mix... Yeah, there, there you go. Yeah, no, this is mega game. 21, 20... Yeah, that's 48, 69... 8,700, 85, no, okay, I, I, look, it doesn't matter. Okay, this is gonna be another really good one. I'm going second against tier elements. Not the best hand necessarily, but also, like, not the worst. 
It's just that I hate seeing two Cyber Dragon. That's the reason why this card is usually just a two of in my uh, in my builds. We yeah, had double Reno Heart Ash, Tier Elements Kashtira, and I guess the Happy, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. Normal summon the Reno Heart, and then uh, send the Tier Cash, mail two, sends the freaking Malicious, and then summon another Tier Cash, uh, mail three, mails the Solix. So yeah, that's story of my life. Searches the Sharon, and then special summon that. Uh, get rid of the Happy because that's useless, and then the, does not mail the second Malicious, so special summons it from the deck. And then that is going to go into, well, I mean, you're going to make a Redeemer. And then uh, tag out, uh, share in effect, summon the Kaleido Heart. Never mind, yeah, that, that, that was dangerous. And so well, that, that makes sense because Beatrice is still not banned. Beatrice is going to get banned in a few days though, so can forget about it. Uh, sends another Malicious. Okay, yeah, that's true. It's a three now. This is so stupid. Summons Beatrice finally after 10 years and then sends Trivi Karma, which searches the field spell. And then activate that, which searches the Havness. And uh, I'm gonna have to deal with Havness and an Ash, which I don't know about yet. Because Tyr cannot really play hand shops. So I'm really confused. Yo, what is this deck looking like? Oh my god. Yeah, this is the exact opposite of, 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 of a regular Tyr deck, actually. Brick City Tyr. So 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... 10, 11, 12, yeah, we're, that's like 15 hat shops in a, in a tier deck, yo, that makes zero sense, I am so freaking confused, but it doesn't matter, because he, he's drawing all the, all the, all the, all the gas cards, and, you know what, Cyber Dragon best deck, so, you can look at this board, it looks really juicy, but, it doesn't scare me, so, you know, summon the Drago Stapelia using the Sharon, and then destroy my Cyber Dragon, that's a nice deck you got there. Activate Mind Control. Steal your Kaleido Heart. So I think he used the Destroy effect a little too early. That normal summon the core and then effect uh, chain the Havness and also chain the Dragos Tapelia. So that negates the activated effect, not the effects overall. So it's still treated as a Cyber Dragon. And mail three cards with the Havness, which means that the Solik is live, unfortunately. So now I have to navigate around Solik. Otherwise, he can uh, negate something and then trigger the Havness, which then summons nothing really. Yeah, unless he plays like a second Kaleido Heart, which I really doubt. Yeah, so he would have summoned a monster that doesn't interrupt me, and it can't trigger the field spell again. So like I said, he did use his field spell pop a little too early. And now I'm going to go for the SP uh, Little Knight right away. I also could have went for Chaos Angel, and then Chaos Angel would have been able to banish something, but then it plays really hard into Solix, so I don't think that's a good idea. I might as well use the SP because it can, ban uh, it can, you know, it can dodge the Solix. So I can guarantee I banish the Solix, which I really don't want on his field. And then the thrust gets ashed. So, th so that was really rough for me because now I'm left with Cyber Dragon, Emergency, and that's it. The good news is Cyber Dragon is one heck of a board breaker. Like, extremely good because I can contact Fuse using one monster and then I can make a Mega Fleet and then go into Typhon and then bounce something and then run over something. So one single monster is triple removal. So against this kind of board, when there's no more interruptions anymore and it's just a bunch of beat sticks. I am not bothered whatsoever. You want to make your SP? That is completely fine. I feel like I'm, I can't lose this game anymore. I had to grind through a lot too. It was like Kaleido Heart, Solik, Redeur, S, like Sprint, which can bounce back a monster. Uh, but I feel like something went wrong. And also the Ash on my Thrust, because if, if the Thrust would have resolved, oh my, it would have been like mega game. But now there is an SP there, and I have a core in my grave, so I can also use the core, summon something from the grave. I need to make sure I don't play into that SP, which could banish something, so I just summon Cyber Dragon, run over. And then main phase 2 I play because I want to secure a Cyber Dragon Infinity play. So normal summon the next turn, revive back the Cyber Dragon, and then overlay for Cyber Dragon Nova Infinity. But he's just going to scoop it up, because regardless of what he draws, he can't win with just a Nimseti, which does nothing. And he was going to draw into a tier Elements Reino Heart, so again, he goes normal summon effect, I can just negate. And that is just going to be GG. Okay, so this time I'm going second against Rescue Ace. Again, I just love going second. Prosperity, Banish 3, get a bunch of useless cards. I mean, the, the, the Excavate was so bad, it was Extinguish, Rescue Ace, uh, the Field Spell, and then Impulse. I guess Impulse is like the least garbage card here. I mean, the Field Spell is good, but not when you have... I and mean, it would have been decent here. Hydrant, Search Airlifter, and then Normal Summon again, Search Emergency. I don't know, maybe that's not like the correct way to play it out. Play it out. I, I'm not a Rescue Ace player. And I'm also pretty sure uh, should have made like an SP before the uh, Turbo Lance, so that if I Imperm, then you can just dodge. Again, I, I don't know shit about this deck. Uh, there's four back row and call by the grave and princess so that's all i know and it's not enough to beat me by the way the rescue ace monsters are for the most part all machines uh, except for airlifter and impulse which are warriors so i can contact fuse with pretty much everything there i'm gonna go uh, talent just to look at the hand so make sure that my thrust can resolve uh, if my opponent had ash or jewel or something i uh, get hit by a call by the grave on the cyber dragon where i'm when i'm trying to lightning storm that's fine yeah i see soldier discard the cyber dragon search another copy of itself and then activate the change of heart steal the heat 
Kalita. Also could have been the prince princess, but I wanted to make sure that the princess was underneath my infinity as a material so that my opponent would get any, uh, wouldn't get any recursion. So that's what exactly what I'm about to do. Cyber Dragon Nova, infinity, attach the princess. So as long as I have it here, my opponent can't really do much with that princess and then attack for 47. And regardless of what my opponent top decks, it's not going to do anything. Like top deck Imperm, what is that going to do? Get back your trap card. Again, that's completely pointless. Okay, last replay against uh, Rescue Ace. So airlifter, double veiler, uh, rescue, and emergency. My hand is weird. It's uh, droplet, double machine dupe, core, and thrust, which looks really broken, but I don't know. And, and also, uh, I'm not going to spoil it, but yeah, it's, this is going to be a, a very interesting game. That's all I can say. Again, keeps making Hita right away instead of SP. I, I really don't understand why. Is that the strategy or is he playing like a budget rescue ace deck in an online simulator? M may maybe. I Maybe he's playing with the cards he actually owns in real life. That's what people do sometimes. But that Puzzle Mino play, I really don't think was necessary because he's using... He, he had two Link 2 monsters anyway, so he could have just done that instead. The Hita really just doesn't do anything. He also just... He could have kept the Turbulence on the board and then just instead of having a Hita there, he has Turbulence and the IP with uh, Ibli Lock, but he didn't do that. And also, I'm really stupid. I summoned Cyber Dragon Core in the same column as the Zaz Blaster. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I am going to negate my own cards. But I guess he also didn't catch that because he Veilered me and then I chained the Droplet, uh, tried to negate for two. And he also tried to dodge with an IP play, so that's that's very interesting. I, I guess that's a ruling that a lot of people don't know. If you go Forbidden Droplet, send two cards, and your opponent has two monsters, and let's just say my opponent chains IP, and then links off with another monster, and then summons an SP. My opponent went from two cards to one card, but I already committed to sending two cards with Droplet. Now, what do you think? Do you think that Droplet still tries to resolve as much as possible and still uh, negates one card? The answer is no. It negates zero cards because you have to negate exactly the amount of effect monsters your opponent controls equal to the amount of cards that you pitched so if you send too many cards and then on the resolution your opponent has less monsters on the board it's not gonna negate a single card so that's how he could have dodged the forbidden droplet here but it's not gonna work because i have the disaster blaster in the same column as ip mascarena now because of the fact that i'm extremely stupid and i <laughs> this is embarrassing because of the fact that i negate my own core uh, which was gonna surge the ref system i now have to thrust into the ref system so it's actually insane how i made a huge misplay and it's still gonna pay off because I can, uh, you know, I can recover from it. Even if you were to Veiler me again, I would have summoned two cores off of this Machine Dupe. And then the second Machine Dupe would have summoned the two Cyber Dragons. So this, uh, this, this Veiler never did anything. Yeah, it would have had no purpose whatsoever. And then Veiler on the Cyber Dragon no uh, Nova here, which is very whack because now my Infinity Resolves attach. Again, he completely messed up with the Buzz Lumino play. It wasn't clever at all because he had a way to keep the Turbulence on the board, which would have mean that, uh, which would have meant that these two trap cards actually would have done something. All right, for the deck profile, I brought a couple of changes, but I'm not going to waste too much time here. So three Machine Dupe, three Core, Double Hurts, one Nexture, and three Disaster Blaster. So these are the nine targets. And obviously, you got three Emergency, so you got 84% chance, I think, of drawing any one of these cards, something like that. And the three Machine Dupe, you got like a... A 32% chance of seeing that. So the odds of seeing uh, one machine dupe and one machine dupe target, relatively high. It shouldn't be like too bad. It should be like maybe 26% chance. Three Cyber Dragon, even though you can easily play two copies of this. And then you can also uh, downgrade machine dupe to just a one of because Dribble Tactic Thrust always gets access to it. And this card is the GOAT, honestly. It was one of the best cards for me. Double Galaxy Soldier with Repair Plant, Overload Fusion, Change of Heart, very good card for me. Same thing with Mind Control, Change of Heart slightly better, but it doesn't really change much of anything. The, the majority of the time, it ends up being the same because you're stealing a monster, and then you're using it as a link or a synchro material sometimes even, because I've uh, stolen a couple of level 8 monsters with these cards, and then the, I, I was making Chaos Angels with uh, the core and the level 8 monsters I was stealing, sometimes the Amseti or the Anamorphia Rextra, and even against like other players in some other games. Uh, three Clockwork Knight, which was ironically the worst card in my deck. I uh, Almost every single one of my bricks involved this card, unfortunately. Three Joblet, three uh, Thrust with uh, yeah the, the, the talent, obviously, Light, Lightning Storm Duster and Cyberload Fusion, which was not in my original build, but without this card, your grind game is really weak. Uh, for the extra deck, double Rampage, double Mega Fleet, double Fortress, one Infinity, double Nova, Chaos Angel, Typhon, Seeger, SP, and then Salamangrid El Mirage for when you normal summon Korm. You want to make it so that you got a Light Machine for your Repair Plant. And finally, Relinquished Anima uh, for your Cyber Dragon Hurts. 
usually doesn't come up with next turn because this locks you under machine monsters for the rest of the turn after you use its monster reborn effect. And the side deck is just a bunch of trap cards. So if people force me to go first, it's not going to bother me too much. I just side out every card that is completely unplayable going first, like these cards. And then the mind control change of art. So that's um, at least seven cards. And then also the uh, three joblets. So that's 10. And maybe like two extra machine dupes and the uh, two, well, one cyber dragon. So that's another like three. So 13. But yeah, that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And again, cyber dragon, best deck.